गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर थर्टीन एंड फोर्टीन ऑफ ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट्स स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन राजीव गौबा हु हैज बीन इन द न्यूज रिसेंटली होल्ड्स विच पोजिशन इन इंडिया सो ही इज आवर कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी एंड वाई इज इन न्यूज बिकॉज रिसेंटली ही गॉट एन एक्सटेंशन in the service for another year and with this he is the longest serving cabinet secretary okay and before rajiv gauba b d pande had been the longest serving cabinet secretary from 1972 up to 1977 and rajiv gauba will now be remaining in office till 30th of august 2024 and this is the third time that his service has been extended for one more year okay so that's why rajiv gauba is in news and he is our cabinet secretary now if we see some of the important bureaucratic positions of india let's quickly revise few of them the first position is the chairman of rajya sabha who is the current chairman of rajya sabha this is our vice president obviously mr jagdeep dhankar vice president is always the chairman of rajya sabha okay second is who's our current chief justice of india this is mr d y chandra chut third name is lok sabha speaker who is our lok sabha speaker this is mr om birla then who's the leader of rajya sabha it is our prime minister narendra modi then who is the leader of rajya sabha sorry here it is lok sabha okay leader of lok sabha is prime minister narendra modi and who is our leader for rajya sabha it is mr piyush goel okay then next one is who is the chief election commissioner this is mr rajiv kumar then who is our cag of india means controller and auditor general of india this is mr gc murmu also gc murmu is the external auditor at who right and recently his term has been extended for another 4 years of period the next is who is our attorney general of india this is r venkat ramani okay the next name is about national security advisor who is our national security advisor this is mr ajit doval next is who is our solicitor general of india this is mr tushar mehta and uh, one last is who is our principal scientific advisor so this is mr ajay kumar sood okay these are some of the important positions that can be asked in your examination next question is which country signed the communication interoperability and security memorandum of agreement with the us so pakistan's cabinet has approved the signing of a new security pact with the us it is a basically move that indicates a fresh start in the defense cooperation after years of dis distrust between the two nations and maybe it can open avenues for islamabad to get military hardware from washington so through a circulation summary the cabinet gave its seal of approval to sign the communication interoperability and security memorandum of agreement which is known as cis moa between pakistan and the country us okay so recently both these countries have signed this communication interoperability and security memorandum of agreement now let's revise few of the international current affairs first of all which country is the host for this year's russia africa summit so the venue for this year's summit is russia okay then don't forget that usa has recently unveiled its first nuclear reactor that has been built from scratch in decades and it can produce 1100 megawatts of electricity then after that jim iskia is important who is jim iskia basically he is from uk and recently he has been elected as the chairman of ipcc what is this intergovernmental panel on climate change okay you can be asked that who is the new chairperson of ipcc answer would be jim skia and he is from uk then after that 
Don't forget that recently UNESCO has suggested adding the Venice city to its list of world heritage sites in danger. Okay. And uh, yesterday we have talked about the Falcon Shield 2-3 exercise, which is the exercise between which two countries? China and the UAE. Okay. These are some of the international current affairs. Next question is, which institution releases the rice price index? Actually, in the month of July, the United Nations Food Agency, the Food and Agriculture Organization, reported that the rice price index rose by 2.8%, reaching its highest level in nearly 12 years. And this increment was driven by strong demand and export restrictions that have been imposed by the country, India, which actually affects the prices in key exporting countries. And this was indicated by all rice price index, which is published by the Food and Agriculture Organization. So rice price index is released by the Food and Agriculture Organization headquarters lies in Rome in the country Italy. Now apart from it, which institution has recently established a standard definition for water neutrality? So this is Niti Aayog. Government's think tank Niti Aayog has established a standard definition and approach for water neutrality in industries so as to promote the water conservation and efficient use. So water neutrality will be defined as the total fresh water consumption including direct and indirect water use in the critical supply chains which should be equal to or less than the quantifiable water savings that is achieved through strategies the aim of which is to improve the water use efficiency and the conservation efforts okay so a standard definition for water neutrality has been established by niti ayog okay next question is again important Mr. Ajay Kumar Bhalla, who has been in the news recently, holds which particular position in India? So he is our Union Home Secretary. And why is in news? Because the centre gave another one year extension to him till 22nd of August 2024 as per a notification that is issued by the Department of Personnel and Training. And he was to retire from service in the month of November 2020 after his fixed two years tenure had ended but his term was extended in 2020 through an order till 2021 after which he was given two subsequent one year extensions till 22nd of august 2023 and now finally he has been given extension for another year till 22nd of august 2024 so ajay kumar bhalla is our union home secretary now let's see few more names of different office holders the first one is finance secretary who is our current finance secretary mr t v somanathan second is our defense secretary this is mr giridhar aramani next one is foreign secretary and our current foreign secretary is mr vinay mohan quatra right the next one is revenue secretary and our revenue secretary is mr tarun Bajaj. After that, who is the current Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog? This is Suman Beri. Also, now you have to tell me who is the current Chairman of Niti Aayog. The next one is, who is our Governor of Reserve Bank of India? It is Mr. Shakti Das. Don't forget that this year Shakti Das has won the Governor of the Year Award. Okay. Then who is our Central Vigilance Commissioner? This is Mr. Praveen Kumar Shrivastav. Then who is our Chief Information Commissioner? It is Mr. Yashwardhan Kumar Sinha, YK Sinha. The next is who is the Director of CBI, Central Bureau of Investigation? It is Mr. Praveen Sood. And one last is who is the new Director of RAW? It is Mr. Ravi Sinha. This name is very very important. Okay. And now you have to tell me who is the current chairman of ISRO. Please write your answer in the comment section. Next question is, which country is set to remove extra tariffs on Australian barley as ties improve between the two countries? So recently China said 
that it will remove extra tariffs on Australian barley in the latest improvement of the ties between the two after years of tensions. And Beijing imposed hefty taxes on key Australian export like barley, beef and wine in 2020, which actually leads to a bitter dispute between the two countries. Okay, so essentially China has decided to remove the extra tariffs on Australian barley because the ties between the two countries are now improving. Again, again, let's see a few of the important international current affairs. The first country here is Iraq. Iraq was in news because of three things these days. First of all, recently Iraq has banned its media from using the term homosexuality. Okay, so rather using the term homosexuality, they will prefer the term sexual deviance. Okay, then second news is recently Iraq became the 18th country to successfully eliminate trachoma as a public health concern and this was revealed by the World Health Organization. Also, Iraq is the 50th country to eliminate at least one neglected tropical disease on a global scale. Okay. Then second news is about Cambodia because here the new Prime Minister of Cambodia has been elected and the new Prime Minister of Cambodia is now Hun Manet. He is basically the son of earlier Prime Minister. Then after that, Admiral Lisa Franchetti is very, very important because she is the first woman to lead US Navy. This question is extremely important. Next question is Aditi Swami Parneet Kaur and Jyoti Surekha Venam, who are seen in the news recently, plays which particular sports? So, Aditi Swami Parneet Kaur and Jyoti Surekha Venam of the Compound Women's Archery Team won India's first ever gold medal in the World Archery Championships 2023, the venue of which is Berlin. And don't forget that Sergio Pagni, who is a two-time World Cup final winner, was hired as a chief compound archery coach in the month of December 2022. Basically, all these people are associated with archery and they were in news because recently they have won the India's first ever gold medal in the World Archery Championships, the venue of which is Berlin. Okay. Now let's revise some of the important sport related current affairs. The first one is Belgian Grand Prix. Belgian Grand Prix has been won by Max Verstappen. The second position was occupied by Sergio Perez and the third was Charles Leclerc. After that, which state has recently decided to adopt water tourism and adventure sports policy 2023 so this is the new initiative of uttar pradesh state then which country has won the spanish federation hockey tournament this tournament has been won by our country india and in the finals india has defeated the host country spain after that who's the highest goal scorer with headers in the football history this is cristiano ronaldo and he has broken the record of late german striker kurt muller okay now you have to tell me cristiano ronaldo plays for which country please write your answer in the comment section then after that Iga Swiatek was in news Iga Swiatek is from the country poland and she is the world number one in the wta rankings okay then talking about japan open 2023 the singles men's title was won by victor exilson who's from denmark and he has defeated jonathan christie who's from indonesia okay and if you talk about the women's singles title the winner is n c young who is from south korea and she has defeated he bing jiao who's from the country china okay basically the winner of japan open Men's title is Victor Exelson and women's title is N.C. Young. Next question is, what is the outlay for the Anusandhan National Research Foundation Bill 2023? So the Anusandhan National Research Foundation Bill was introduced in Lok Sabha recently and this bill was given the green light by the union cabinet with a budget of 50,000 crore rupees for the upcoming five years. 
and this allocation aims to systematically foster research and development across india's research institutions colleges and universities at different levels okay so the outlay for this particular bill is 50000 crore rupees also what is the recent highest global sea surface temperature which surpassed the 2016 record so this is 20.96 degree celsius actually the daily global sea surface temperatures have surpassed the 2016 record and it has reached to 20.96 degree centigrade which is significantly higher than the usual average for this period and the previous record was established during the 2016 el nino event when it touched 20.95 degree celsius so basically scientists said that the record will continue to be broken because usually oceans are at their hottest globally in the month of march not august okay so you can be asked that what is the recent highest global sea surface temperature which surpassed the record of 2016 answer would be 20.96 degree centigrade next question is which union ministry is associated with digital personal data protection bill 2023 so after 5 years of negotiations the digital personal data protection bill 2023 was introduced in the parliament by the ministry of electronics and it and it recognizes both the rights of the individuals to protect their personal data and the need to process such type of personal data for lawful purpose okay so digital personal data protection bill is associated with ministry of electronics and it now here we'll discuss two important bills the first one is jan vishwas bill and recently it was passed in lok sabha this bill is associated with ministry of commerce and industry in detail we have discussed about it in our earlier lectures the second one is ullas initiative and this is a initiative of ministry of education full form of ullas is understanding lifelong learning for all in society basic aim is to transform education and literacy nationwide by creating a learning ecosystem that provides basic education digital and financial literacy to the individuals who are aged 15 and above and who never got the chance to attend the school okay so ullas initiative is related with ministry of education next question is which indian state is adopting an early warning system to reduce student dropout so uttar pradesh government is adopting an early warning system that is inspired by the country netherlands to reduce the student dropout rates in the schools and this system closely monitors the student attendance and if a student is absent for more than 40 days educational authorities intervene by contacting their parents or guardians to ensure the students return to school and sustained engagement in their education okay so now uttar pradesh government is adopting this early warning system to reduce the student dropout now uttar pradesh was in news for three things basically these days the first one is pharmaceutical industrial policy 2023 because they want to make the uttar pradesh state as a hub for the pharmaceutical products second news is about dr bhim rao ambedkar award because this year this award has been presented to the chief minister of uttar pradesh mr yogi adityanath and the third news is about the presence of up because now they would be called as reform homes okay then apart from it researchers have recently recorded the first instance of the captive breeding of himalayan vulture in india at the assam state zoo in guwahati basically it is categorized as threatened on the international union for conservation of nature red list of threatened species this particular species is a winter migrant to the indian plains and it is a resident of high himalayas okay you can be asked that the first instance of captive breeding of the himalayan vulture in india has been found to be at which state answer would be assam state next is the offshore areas minerals bill seeks to grant how many years of protection lease for offshore minerals so recently the lok sabha has approved 
द ऑफ शोर एरियाज मिनरल्स अमेंडमेंट बिल ट्वेंटी विच सीक्स टू ग्रांट अ फिक्सड फिफ्टी ईयर्स प्रोटेक्शन लीज फॉर द ऑफ शोर मिनरल्स एंड इट सीक्स टू क्रिएट अ ट्रांसपेरेंट ऑक्शन रूट फॉर एलोकेशन ऑफ माइंस विच विल एक्चुअली इनेबल द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू फ्रेम डिफरेंट रूल्स फॉर कंजर्वेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मिनरल्स इन द ऑफ शोर एरियाज ओके सो ऑफ शोर एरियाज मिनरल्स बिल सीक्स टू ग्रांड टोटल फिफ्टी ईयर्स ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन लीज फॉर द ऑफ शोर मिनरल्स एंड ये स्टडी वी हैव टॉक अबाउट द माइंस एंड मिनरल्स अमेंडमेंट बिल which basically allows the private sectors to mine six minerals including lithium gold and silver earlier the mining of 12 atomic minerals were exclusively reserved for the state owned entities okay so this is mines and minerals amendment bill and now the last question says gills perold who was seen in the news recently was associated with which profession so he is the french author who is known for his novel le pull over rauge which triggered the discussions about capital punishment in france and uh, recently he passed away at the age of 92 years his real name is jacques perols and he is originally a lawyer who transitioned his career as a journalist and later a novelist and later on he adopted the pen name gilles perold okay so he was actually an author now there is one more book that was in news these days it is memories never die don't forget that this book has paid tribute to dr apj abdul kalam okay so these are the most important current affairs and the news from today and now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this meenu jahat sana signing off